So next up, from line, we have Paul Taylor. He came here all the way from Japan. And people can start quieting down. Thank you. And over to you. Uh, thank you. It's nice to be here. Um, so my name's Paul Trailer. Uh, I'm representing Line uh, from Line Fukuoka, and I will be presenting on Prometheus as an internal service. Um, I think whatever, whatever as a service is a very popular title, so that's what I went with. Uh, so quick self introduction. When I was in high school, I wanted to make video games. I thought that sounded fun. Ended up being a lot of work. I decided I'd do something a little bit easier, like web development, internet stuff. Uh, so probably like a lot of you, went to university, studied computer science. After that, I moved to San Francisco. I thought that would be a fun challenge. The first job there, I primarily worked with web development, so some PHP, that kind of fun stuff. My second job, I transferred more into operations, so building and packaging and deploying our software. Uh, I've now been at Lion Fukuoka for about a, a year now, and my current focus is in improving our monitoring setup and improving monitoring. Uh, so what is Lion Fukuoka? Because Lion's very popular in Japan, maybe not quite as popular elsewhere. So Lion itself is a messaging application, probably similar to a lot that you're familiar with. And what Lion Fukuoka does is we build a lot of other apps sort of along the Lion family brand. So a recent one we've done is Lion Creator Studio. So you can make stickers of your pets, of your family, your friends. We have something called Lion Fortune. So you can get, get your daily fortune told, talk with different fortune tellers. It's very popular. Um, we have some survey tools, so tools that companies can easily survey their users, uh, part-time job searching, and just many other services, mostly targeted at uh, Japan right now. And so as I said, my current responsibility is monitoring. So last year, my colleague from Tokyo came and introduced uh, a tool called PromGen. Um, a, Prome a Prometheus configuration tool. Uh, so in the following year, I rewrote that in Django because I wanted to have a little bit better uh, ORM. I wanted the Django admin for free. Uh, it's all there on GitHub if you're interested. Uh, but my main role is to, to continue to develop that and to migrate a lot of our legacy monitoring to Prometheus. So part of that is installing the various exporters, making the playbooks to install them on various servers, uh, setting up the Prometheus targets, so what is Prometheus going to scrape, and then configuring different alerting rules, so when do you know that there's a problem. Uh, so our environment looks kind of like this. Uh, so we have multiple Prometheus shards, each one typically two Prometheus servers, so we have some HA there. Uh, each one scraping lots of different targets. We have PromGen, which is managing the configuration file. And so PromGen will set up the Prometheus configuration, reload Prometheus. Prometheus will scrape targets, send messages to Alert Manager. Uh, so we found Alert Manager was difficult to use sometimes, so we actually route the alerts back through PromGen. Um, and we'll go, I'll go into that detail a little bit. So looking on the Prometheus side, we have PromGen managing the configuration file. Usually there's uh, pairs of Prometheus in a cluster, handles the reload. And we have Grafana querying, but maybe people that have a lot of Prometheus servers know it can be very difficult to find which Prometheus server my metrics are on. Uh, so I implemented a, a, a little bit naive, but a simple proxy so that Grafana will query PromGen and PromGen will query each of the Prometheus servers and re return the result. Uh, and so, since we don't use any of the standard service discovery mechanisms, we're using the file discovery mechanism. Uh, and we use PromGen to write a configuration file to the disk. And then we use the relabeling configs, similar to something you'd use with Kubernetes or a console, 
to assign the specific targets to, to that shard. Uh, so then on the alert manager side, again, we had a little bit of trouble building very large uh, alerting tables directly in alert manager. So what, since we already have a list of our grouping, uh, we tend to break things down by service and project. Since we already have those groupings within PromGen, we found that it was much easier to route our alert messages through PromGen and then to the direct notifications. Uh, however, if PromGen goes down, then you're kind of in trouble because, well, that's part of, as a point of failure on your alerting pipeline. So we also have some backup rules in place so that we can redirect around that. Uh, also, Alert Manager doesn't really have a history of alerts, and I don't know, probably a lot of people have their email for their history, but I get a lot of email and I tend to delete a lot. Uh, so we throw a bunch of those into the database as well. And so our Alert Manager configuration looks kind of like this. So by default, we route everything through PromGen, and we group by service and project, service and team kind of thing. Uh, however, anything that matches our alert manager job, so any alert manager uh, alerts and such, we will route directly to email or just or directly to us so that we have a backup in case uh, something's not working as expected. Uh, so, so as we've been providing Prometheus as a server to our other teams within the company, uh, learned a lot of different things in trying to operate Prometheus. So one of the first questions is, what's... So, hmm? ah, I'm sorry, can you, is that better? Sorry about that. Uh, so to scale Prometheus, you often have it in HA configuration, but you have to start splitting it up to scale up. So the question is, where's my shard? Uh, and it can be really annoying to go into Grafana trying to find which shard is this service assigned to. So like I mentioned earlier, it's a little bit naive, but what I've done is made a shim in PromGen side. So I proxy the queries back from Grafana, query each of the shards in Prometheus and combine the result and return it. Uh, probably doing something proper with remote read would be a, a better long-term situation. And I'm definitely interested in some of the work with long-term storage and I think there was some talk about Prometheus being able to use other Prometheus servers as long-term store or as a remote uh, read. So I've definitely been watching that uh, just to see how the development with that goes on. I think some people also mentioned retention. So Prometheus mostly cares about the present, what happened, what's happening now, or what happened this week, or I think 15 days ago. Uh, and developers also usually care about uh, the present. So what's, what's wrong? What's waking me up at night? But then a lot of times when you're doing capacity planning and when you want to look at historical data, well, how do you handle that? Because Prometheus rightly mostly is optimized against the recent. Uh, but the other thing is we wanted to try to use the same query for both the recent metrics and the older metrics because we don't want to write to of every kind of query. So the solution that we were trying to come up with that, as I'll point out, has not worked very well, is we have our, our standard Prometheus cluster, which we have set at 90 days, so three months. And they, set a, they scrape a set of targets. And then we have a second set that scrapes the exact same set of targets. But then we have some recording rules to build summaries. Uh, and then using federation, we thought we'd put that and store that for a year. So we would summarize the metrics and then store the summary of that uh, long term. I, I see Brian shaking his head. As, as probably people who have started to scale Prometheus know, uh, this did not scale well. Uh, so, since, so naively we thought, well, the summary server is scraping a lot, um, but the long term doesn't really have to store as much data. Oh, we'll just put them on the same machine. Uh, so, obviously, lots of memory problems because now you have two Prometheus servers trying to scrape a lot of the same metric. Well, you have a set scraping all of the metrics, and you have a recording rule running over all of those metrics, and then you're trying to federate all of those summaries. It does not scale well. 
uh, we're really going to need to look at the proper remote write and remote read sometime uh, to find a much better solution for this. Uh, so I'm looking forward to learning from everyone else's experience. Uh, and as we're running Prometheus, we also have tried to keep up with the upstream project, trying to read what kinds of things are in the pipeline, uh, keep track of things that maybe will affect us. So on GitHub, each page has a pulse page. So every morning I tend to look at the Prometheus and the alert manager and some of the different components to see what, what are some of the recent things in the pipeline, what are other problems that people are having, what issues might affect me. Uh, of course, sometimes I get surprised by things. So this ticket that I listed here when the federation uh, changed a little bit to match the push gateway better so that it would automatically export a blank instance label. But since I was using that instance label to, to dedupe across my HA machines, it sort of made things quite confusing. I got a lot of duplicate metric errors in Prometheus. Uh, so looking at my query again, I'm basically taking a sum of the scrape samples because I want to sort of see how busy my servers are. So in this case, I on the on my meta Prometheus server, I use a relabel config to sort of add back the instance. This time I just called it a cluster node. And then in my Grafana query, I can take do the sum and average. So in the inner one, I will do without cluster node. I want to get rid of sort of the duplicate from my HA configuration. And then on the outside, I'll, I'll group by cluster name because I want to get the meta metrics for that entire cluster. And then I can get a graph kind of like this. Uh, but uh, so it's also kind of difficult to write queries. And since we're providing Prometheus as a server to our other developers, uh, we're trying to teach our other developers how to write Prometheus queries. Uh, so this is another page that I reference quite a lot, looking at the different Prometheus functions and aggregate functions and such. Uh, but sometimes there's a lot of labels to remember. So in our service, we break up things by service label and project label. So we have a lot there. But if you're using the node exporter, well, every disk metric has mount points and file system types and such. Each one of your network metrics has the interface and many labels there. Uh, so sometimes it can get a little bit tricky to remember what metrics you're querying on and what are the labels that you uh, care about. And so then, of course, is it without, by, ignoring, on? Uh, so originally had someone write this, this query to see which if the file system is getting free on a, a particular instance. Um, but there's a slight problem with that. Maybe there's many different mount points. Maybe there's many different partitions on a single server. So I, I message in IRC, what would cause Prometheus to fill up disk space so fast? Actually, it wasn't Prometheus. It was my logs on a different partition. But since my query had gotten rid of the mount point, I didn't know that. I had to sort of dig in there and figure out what was going wrong. So then I rewrote that, adding the mount point into my max one, because I wanted to see, because the mount point tends to be rather important there. Um, but then now that I hadn't factored out all of my other labels, I decided I wanted to ignore a couple of things that it, for, for this particular graph I didn't care about. In this case, I don't care about temp file systems and the extra root partition that's there. Um, but then also, so queries are hard, but also rules can be a little bit difficult. I had a good conversation with Brian. A lot of people want to look at squishy metrics like load average, but does that actually tell you anything? Load average can fluctuate. What you really want is stuff like memory or disk space, things that can't really expand, can't really stretch. Um, also, Prometheus, in a, in a Prometheus server, all of the rules are sort of a global namespace. So if we're locating a bunch of services and projects that are unrelated but on the same Prometheus server, and I write a rule for this metric, well, since I route my alerts on service and project, I don't really want to wake up another team, or I don't want to be woken up by another team. Uh, so since we manage our rules through PromGen, and we already know our, our projects and service, what we did is when we write a global rule, 
we sort of have wrote a sort of macro in there. So we start off with an example rule and say service A decides to write their own one. When service A writes an overwrite, we will automatically update the global rule to ignore that service A. So then when we write service uh, B, it'll automatically update the, it'll go up the parent chain and automatically uh, ignore all of the child rules. So whenever I overwrite a global rule that the ops team has set up, so some of the basic metrics, uh, a team can always come back later and customize it for what makes the most sense for uh, their particular team. Uh, so also try to, because it doesn't make sense to peop for people to duplicate all of their work, because a lot of people have node, ex uh, node exporter metrics and Nginx and such. So we can probably reuse a lot of those dashboards, and we try to provide some basic dashboards, sometimes from Grafana.net, sometimes with customized dashboards. Uh, but we sort of try to provide that so that our developers don't have to become Grafana masters. Uh, but then even when you start having a lot of templates at the top of Grafana, it can be difficult. Where's my shard? Which service project? So we have a lot of templates that, so you can drill down um, but again, what I mentioned earlier, we have a simple proxy that we put in place there. So at least the, the shard part, which shard is my service on, you can sort of forget about that. Uh, and then <clears throat> it's also sometimes a little bit difficult to modify since we are helping maintain a lot of dashboards for many different teams. If I decide later I want to add a link or navigation to a dashboard or I want to change the way some of the queries work, it can be kind of tricky. Uh, so we're looking at trying to maybe auto-generate some of those dashboards, look at maybe do a Prometheus query or a query from our PromGen database and be able to automatically generate some of those dashboards. So last year, my colleague uh, introduced uh, PromGen. And so one year later, like I said, I rewrote that in Django. Uh, it was originally a Sinatra app, but I wanted to take advantage of having an ORM for the low-hanging fruit, and I wanted to take advantage of the Django uh, admin panel for handling a lot of the sort of boring CRUD operations that we're probably all tired of writing. Uh, I wanted to sort of work on building a better rule editor. It can be a little bit difficult to understand how to write a rule, and when you're writing a rule, how will it affect things? Uh, as we had more developers start using Prometheus in their project and instrumenting things, uh, needed to be able to manage the shards for the configuration. <clears throat> so, so right now it's quite uh, simple. I'd like to get some better syntax highlighting and such in there. Um, but at the top, I went ahead and put links to all of the Prometheus documentation because I know I often forget what's the exact function name, how do some of the operators and such work. Uh, put an example query. So you can see here I have this exclude macro. That's something from PromGen's side. That's how PromGen knows to read the parent rules and, and overwrite things. Uh, then, of course, the query editor, which is basically the text box itself, is actually very similar to the one in Prometheus itself. Uh, and then just a test button. So even when you're editing the query in our dashboard, you can easily uh, go in there and test to see what what metrics are returning. Because again, since we're routing on those labels, if you write a query that discards our labels, then you can't route your message anymore. So being able to see that, oh, it still has my service and project label that I route on has been quite useful. And then since we do a lot of dynamic, uh, being able to modify the, the way alerts are delivered, we have a, a little interface that the developers themselves can say, okay, I want email alerts for this service, or I want uh, line, since I work at line. So I want to get a line notification when something critical comes. But if it's something that I can get to later, maybe I want an email notification. So having a, a UI where I can modify our alerting targets has been quite nice. But maybe I'll try to build a better um, dynamically handle the alert manager configuration. For, but for now, being able to, to configure it here has been kind of useful. So that's that's all I have uh, for uh, any questions. Thank you. Hey, uh, 
thanks a lot for the talk. Um, the dead prompt chain thing that looks pretty useful. Why are you not doing it upstream? Um, well, I think with so with uh, Prometheus, there's already a lot of different service discovery mechanisms, um, but it doesn't make sense to always push very like company custom things to Prometheus. They probably don't care about our internal inventory systems. Uh, so, so initially, Promgen was mostly to sort of be a bridge between our custom in-house service discovery and the Promgen or the Prometheus uh, file format, um, but also being able to alert to configure the alert notifications also. Uh, but it is open source. It is on GitHub. So please feel free to check it out. Hi. Uh, question. You said that Promgen can be used to generate Prometheus config, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and how you deliver config to Prometheus node? Do you have some kind of agent or SSH mm -hmm. or what? Uh, the way we handle it is we just have a just a little Celery uh, worker running on each machine. So whenever a developer updates the configuration within the dashboard, we'll automatically send a Celery task out to each machine to uh, write the new configuration file and reload the Prometheus server. But you could also just do a cron job to query it or it's, ultimately, it's just the file uh, service discovery. So any way that you wanted to deploy that configuration file, it's pretty easy to do. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you define shard key? How do you uh, think, uh, know that these metrics go to shard A and those mm -hmm. to shard B? Uh, so we tend to group things by service and project. So all, so all, so this service and project uh, are on this shard. So everything within that will be on that shard. The shards are sort of assigned by the ops team when we spin up a new Prometheus cluster. And from within the Promgen dashboard itself, you say, I want to put things on this shard. Uh, we want to do something better to figure out, well, this shard is, has too much on it. Probably should put it on this shard. But I'm still trying to figure out the best metrics from my, my meta Prometheus server. Sort of like this metrics mean Prometheus is running well. This one means that we should probably migrate things over. Can you automatically split or merge shards? Uh, well, that would. Well, I mean, I can easily merge the configuration file, but since Prometheus doesn't really, I don't think you'd really merge the Prometheus data itself. I can't do that. However, if you wanted to split a node, what I would probably do is since I'm running two nodes or multiple nodes in HA, I'd probably split those nodes, put those both in a new shard, and then add new backup nodes. Okay, thank you. How does it look like this uh, Prometheus proxy on mm. Promgen? Uh, you create a query to all, all, the, all of your uh, Prometheus servers, mm. and how do you uh, merge this data? Uh, so right now, I'm doing it in a very naive way, which for Grafana's purpose works pretty well. I take the query from Grafana, I take the exact same query string and send that to each of the configured upstream Prometheus nodes. Those return JSON, and then I just merge the JSON and throw it back at Grafana. So, so you, you don't do any modification, any counters, hmm. anything like that? Okay. So most of the time it works fine because of the way our things are divided up into service and project. If I wanted to do across many projects, then it gets messy because I have multiple time series with the same same labels, and uh, that doesn't work so well. So, admittedly, a very naive thing, but from most developers' perspective, it works okay. Ah, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, um, what do you think? Like, is there a role? Sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so uh, is there like a minimum size of a project or company or something where you would think about using Promgen? Uh, so Align has a lot of different internal, lots yeah. of different uh, services, and each one of those services has lots of in individual components. Um, it's hard to say like what size it would be well. I think if you're a small company with just a couple of, of different components, then you could probably just do pretty well with normal service discovery mechanisms and such. 
Uh, a lot of this is because we have to bridge a custom in-house inventory. Okay. Uh, so that's how a lot of that came about. Thanks. So is this Bromgen query proxy a separate tool, a separate piece of software I can configure separately, or is this built right into Bromgen? Uh, right now, it's just a couple of extra endpoints on Promgen itself. Um, but because my solution is so naive, it would be very simple to copy into to somewhere else if you wanted. Um, I, I can I can post the code on Twitter with a Promgen link and let you find it that way with a Promcon link. Okay. Thank you.